I am going to take you in an exciting journey. I'm a food writer, blogger, poet, and a girl who has an insatiable appetite for life. Whatever's in my fridge, that is what I'm going to teach you guys, so that it's going to be very easy food, uh, but it is restaurant quality food. Cooking and baking is therapy for me. It is an art form, a form of poetry in its own right. Through homemade, I am going to be sharing some of my favorite recipes with you. Join with me on my homemade journey. This is my homemade. Hi guys, my name is Sahan Hevadeva and you are here with me on Homemade on Hi TV, the luxury channel. I'm a food critic, I'm a part-time actor. Uh, my main professional background is in wines and I'm a sommelier qualified. Uh, basically, I'm a wine taster and I get paid to drink. My grandmother and me, we used to make cutlets and all that. My mother and me, we used to make all these idiapas and, and all sort of things. So, you know, that is what inspired me. And as I grew up, as I grew older and all that, my working inspired me. I met so many chefs around the world. I hope to, you know, pass on a little bit of knowledge of my home cooking to you guys. Today, we're going to do a nice seafood dish, a nice Atlantic salmon. Well, this one is not an Atlantic salmon, this one is an Indian salmon. So, come with me as we take you to another journey of one of my favorite dishes, homemade dishes, salmon done in a beurre blanc sauce. All right, let's start with the ingredients today. We have, of course, a salmon, nice piece of salmon, nice salmon fillet. We have some spinach, we have some nice lemon, some capsicum, uh, some potatoes and all that. And then we always, as always, have our basic necessities. Uh, shallots, butter, a bit of, you know, your herbs and spices, tomatoes. We got our nice little herb bunch and all that. And cream and a bit of, you know, lemon juice as well today to go with all this. And of course, not forgetting we're going to do a nice little rosé today to deglaze this salmon, as always, some wine. Let's we'll start with the pan, nice and hot. Let's get your salmon out, nice salmon fillet, get your nice little filleting. We're just going to lift it up a bit and we're just going to score it a little bit. Just getting rid of all that unwanted scales of the fish. And that will help us to get our seasoning in there as well. Now scrape it a little bit, get rid of the scales. We don't want those yucky parts. We're going to add some seasoning into it, some salt, some pepper. What we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of Cajun spices and then we're just going to rub it nicely in, make sure that seasoning gets right into that fish. If you get any scales, remove those scales, get rid of those nasty little things, you don't want those. We're going to put a nice dollop of butter, it's a good place to start off with always and always, always put the skin down. Let it play around with it. Clean up your chopping board. And we're just gonna play around with it a little bit. Pour that butter in there. You can see the butter is getting all nutty and all that. So I gotta work really fast on this. Don't play around too much with the salmon. A little bit more butter. Because we are making a beurre blanc sauce. Get our rosé. Glaze it a bit. As soon as it's laid out, we're going to put some lemon juice in there. We're going to add some cream into it as well. So that's just going to help it to just to combine itself. Mix that up a little bit. Put some shallots in there. We don't want to hurt the fish, just on the side. 
get some parsley, chop it up, just throw it in there. You can see the sauce is becoming nice, coloured. Uh, salmon doesn't take much long to cook and all that, so you've got to keep an eye out for it. So now while that is getting done there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some potatoes. Now these potatoes, they're boiled and all that, so you don't have to do much about it. All you have to do is just smash it. Just keep in mind, we're not making any mashed potatoes, we're making smashed potatoes. So just that, some salt, some nice pepper. Just keep an eye out on your Beblanc sauce. Put some cream on it as needed. A bit more lemon juice. And what we're going to do is we're going to slowly try and flip this fish around without hurting it. Uh, as you can see, if you come closer, you can see the skin nice and crispy coloured. So that's what we really wanted. Just play around with the sauce, reduce the heat a bit, let that salmon cook nicely. Now, some people like it medium rare. I prefer my salmon medium, uh, but Sri Lankans sometimes they say they want it well done. Well, we don't recommend that. I don't recommend that highly. You know, it's not the best to have uh, well done salmon. And see how that fish is doing. Just lift it up slightly, have a look how it's hap what's happening underneath. Remove it from the heat, you don't need to burn it anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to slowly transfer this into this pan. And let that sit. We're going to add some more lemon juice into this. We're going to add some more cream. What we're going to do is we're going to try and reduce that on low heat. So real low heat, just so that it combines together and comes up with a nice, nice lemon beurblanc sauce. So while that is getting reduced, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another pan, light it up in there, bit of olive oil, let that heat up. Keep an eye out on your sauce, make sure it doesn't brown up or anything like that. You can finish it up with a little bit of butter, butter that's left. That's it guys, our sauce is ready. Just gonna heat it off the heat and let that reduce a little bit more. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the potatoes, put that in there. We're gonna get some spinach. We're not gonna do much, we're just gonna chop it up. It's gonna cook really fast. I'm gonna take that there and put that there. Do some pepper. And of course, some salt. Toss it up. And let that get sorted real nicely. Take a little bowl here. We're gonna make a little nice tomato salsa. Some tomatoes, onions. We're gonna take a nice little capsicum here. Cut it in half. We just need a little bit of yellow color. So we're just trying to add some color into our tomato salsa. Add that into that. Put a balsamic vinaigrette. Some olive oil, get a little fork and just toss it. Just a bit, a bit of color and that is it. So that's one part of it. Get a lemon, cut it in half, keep it on the side. Touch and see how the potatoes are. Now it's time to plate it up. Lightly. There in the corner, start about nine o'clock. We're gonna get our salmon, which is quite nicely done. Put that on the side. Get our little thing on, use your hand, don't be afraid. It's homemade. Put that there. And a nice little trail going that way. Get our sauce, it's 
nicely released now. Sauce on top. Finish it off, get a nice lemon, squeeze it a bit. And there you have guys, a nice salmon dish. So, to recap, we have a uh, Pacific or uh, Indian Ocean salmon uh, done with a nice smashed potatoes and a nice vinaigrette salsa, salsa tomato salsa. Guys, so there you have it. Salmon uh, done with the blanc sauce, uh, mashed potatoes, spinach, and a nice tomato salsa. I'm gonna taste it. Join me. You can see it's nice and pink in the middle. That's what we need. Oh, that salmon is done really nicely. It's not overly cooked. That's the whole idea of it. The citrus is beautiful in the mouth. It cuts through all the fattiness. You can hardly get that butter coming through. Nice crispy skin. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did it. Do try it and uh, see how it comes with you. Uh, it's a nice romantic dinner. Make it to your girlfriend, make it to your husband, whoever you, you want. And until we join from another episode of High TV Homemade, I'm San Heva Deva and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good night. I'm Janice Senanaika and welcome to Homemade. I come from a family of foodies and cooking for me therefore is second nature. Through this program Homemade, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite recipes with you. The flavors that I've grown to love. You can follow me on my food adventures on Instagram under Pekishmi. And you can find the latest recipes on my blog, www.pekishmi.com. As a working woman, uh, cooking isn't as much fun as coming home to crash down on a couch on a weekday evening and do absolutely nothing. However, I do also love my food, so this is a dish that I absolutely go for when I'm also hungry, but not in a mood to cook. I call this my tarragon chicken recipe. I have six chicken thighs here. I'm using thighs because that's my favorite cut of the chicken. I have 250 grams of leeks. I have 250 milliliters of fresh cream, 100 milliliters of milk, one large onion, which I'm going to chop. Um, I have minced garlic, salt and pepper, and my absolute favorite ingredient is tarragon. And then I have this little gold that I call saffron. And then my go-to chili food. This is my absolute favorite part of the recipe. In order to tenderize any type of meat, be it chicken, lamb or uh, actually any type of meat at all, I found that whacking it until it becomes tender and loose helps so much. So that is what I'm going to do today. Just put that piece of thigh on the chopping board. And if you have a mallet to do this, all the more power to you, but I don't have a mallet, so I'm just going to use this trusty rolling pin of mine. Just conjure up all that frustration and pent up anger that you may have and just like whack it. Just really give it a go until the flesh is loose and tender. You need to do this for all the six pieces. Right, so we have the tenderized chicken pieces. Now we have to fry it off a little bit in the pan with a little bit of oil so that we seal in the flavor. Pan is on high heat and we are going to put a little bit of oil into the pan. Just let it heat up a little bit. So we've tenderized the chicken and we need to sprinkle it a little bit more with some pepper and a little salt. 
just let it marinate for about 10 to 15 minutes and that should be quite enough. So I think the oil has heated up quite a bit. So what we are going to do is lay down the chicken pieces one by one. You can hear that beautiful kick as the chicken hits the oil. Be very careful because the oil is very hot. Chicken doesn't need to be cooked right through. You just need to seal in both the sides until it's slightly cooked. I think we are done. We are going to take it off heat now. Take the chicken and put it on a separate plate. Keep it aside to rest because meat needs a little bit of resting after you cook it. Keep it down for a while. So we need to chop up one large onion. Right, now the onion is done. We need to fry it off in the same oil that we fried off the chicken in. I've already told you that we need 250 grams of leeks as well. So I'm going to chop that up roughly right about now. So the oil is nicely heating up right now. So I'm just going to throw in the onions over there just to sweat it a little bit. There you have it. I'm just going to let it sweat a little bit. And while it does its magic, I'm just going to chop up these leeks. You don't need to go really fine with the leeks, just very roughly, just chop it up. We need to add a little bit of garlic. I would say two teaspoons of garlic. I love a lot of garlic in my food. It's healthy as well. You need to fry it off until it gives off that garlicky fragrance. But be very careful not to burn the garlic. It's very easy to do this. So the onion is nice and translucent right now and you can smell it. You get that beautiful aroma from the onions and the garlic. Let's leave that for a minute here and pop in these beautiful leeks that I've chopped up earlier. To this I'm going to add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. So it's time to add the tarragon. One teaspoon, one full teaspoon. I just love the smell of tarragon. It has this beautiful citrusy, um, sort of like coriander sort of feel to it. Stir that in. And then the chili flakes. I like a little bit of spice in my life, so two heap two teaspoons. Beautiful. Right, so we take the chicken now. We need to lay it down one by one into the leeks and onion mixture. We don't want any of that beautiful juices to go to waste, so I'm just going to pop that in as well. Stir it all in. Let the chicken just soak up all that beautiful flavor for about two minutes and reduce the heat a little bit while you're at it and let it cook in its own juice. Right, so this has been beautifully cooking in its own juices for some time now. 
I am now going to add the fresh cream. I have 250 milliliters here. Just pour it all in. I have 100 milliliters of milk as well. I'm going to toss it all in as well. Now this needs to simmer and come down a little bit until it thickens slightly. This is nicely thickening up right now. You can smell the tarragon and the garlic and the leeks and it's just absolutely beautiful. And you wouldn't even imagine cooking something like this on a weekday night because when you look at it, it's very elaborate, it's very beautiful and it actually seems like a restaurant quality dish. And for my secret ingredient, the saffron. Saffron is known to be the most expensive spice in the world and I love saffron for its beautiful fragrance and the color that it imparts into any food that you infuse it with. Just a small pinch would do. If you look closely, you can actually see the saffron stands just giving out that beautiful yellowy color. You need the gravy to have a little bit of wateriness because once it cools down, the mixture also thickens a little bit. So you need to leave some room for that. So I am going to leave it at this consistency and take it off heat now. Right, we are done. Now this is something that you can actually serve up with bread, any type of flat bread that you like and even rice. But today I am going to serve it with some fettuccine, uh, pre-made pasta. I have prepared it as per package instructions and I've daubed it with some olive oil. And actually pre-made pasta can be stored in the fridge for up to three to five days. So for a working woman or a working man, this is very, very convenient for you to just pre-make it and store it in the fridge. Right, so I'm just going to pour all this beautiful gravy and the chicken onto this fettuccine, one by one. The creamy mixture actually works like a pasta sauce, bringing together the fettuccine. So a little bit here which you can store for later on. I'm going to sprinkle some chili flakes on top of it. Just beautiful red flakes of flavor. And voila, the tarragon chicken is served. And now for the taste test. It smells delicious. Mm. Beautiful. You can taste the saffron actually and the tarragon. I love how the flavors of tarragon and saffron melt together in the perfect marriage. And the cream sort of all brings it all together. And you get that heat of spice, heat of chili from the chili flakes. And this could not be more perfect than this. I'm in love with this dish. I hope you enjoyed my tarragon chicken. This is my homemade.